Okay, so um, Nakoyo, it's a young lady who has um, the constituency at heart, and it's um, a lady who wants to make Kaswa proud. Um, there are a lot of things that has gone on within Kaswa and its environs within an eight years, and uh, the people of Kaswa are crying and yelling for a change. So now call you Okuno, it's here to give Kaswa that change. And when we talk of change, it's not just any change, because there could be changes that are negative and positive. This change we're talking of is a positive change, um, service to mankind, service to humanity, and service to the constituency. Mm. Now, um, th there are many areas, and if you can just uh, walk me through, there are many areas uh, that w uh, we've been able to just uh, do the wrecking before coming to you for this interaction. I would say that it looks to be a mixed bag of a community, very uh, peri-urban, new areas, but also um, many people who are inhabiting the constituency who also would need a lot of help. But we do know that you don't think that the current MP is doing so well. What do you think that your constituents need? Okay, so um, as you said earlier, Kaswa is more of a cosmopolitan um, constituency where we have all the tribes, um, all the kinds of life, um, from the high level to the middle class to the elites, everybody is in Kaswa here. So to deal with the people of Kaswa, it's, it's not difficult, but it's dicey. You need to be very tactical to be able to, um, to say to, to reach out to all the groups. And um, Kaswa over the years has been static. Uh, with the exception of um, the development that was done under the able leadership of the next president of the Republic of Ghana, John Dramani Mahama. You know, we didn't, uh, after the division, we didn't have an MP, but we had an MC. So most of the projects or most of the development in the constituency was done under John Dramani Mahama. We can talk of um, very good roads. We can talk of our schools. The only um, day senior high school at the Odutong Pehije River. We can talk of the assembly building. We can talk of the GS office. We can talk of the, ch the number of chip compounds we have in the constituency. We can talk of the, uh, the jobs. The jobs that even these roads that were constructed have created. If you just look in be behind me, you will see the number of people that have erected their shops and their tables to sell. It was as a result of these roads that have been constructed. So a lot of things have happened over the eight years in the constituency, but all these things happened under the able leadership of John Dramani Mahama, that's the next president of the Republic of Ghana. Aside that, we cannot go out and pinpoint of any other development, any initiative that has gone on within the constituency. Um, the MP now, Hawa Kumsen, she's been the MP for eight years. And to say the least, nothing. There hasn't been any development in the constituency at all. There hasn't been any change. There hasn't been any upliftment. The people within the constituency are looking for someone who can bring change. They need jobs. They need good infrastructures. Our sanitation and health problem is an issue. Above all, security. Normally when I say security, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to talk about the security as to those in uniform, uniformed men. But when we say security, we have to link it to jobs. We have to link it to infrastructure. And if you have good jobs, for the youth especially, if our women go to the market and they are not beaten, they are safe, they can go to the market, display their words and get it sold. Uh, we have a, a good hospital, we have a good sanitation system, it all boils back to security. And our security men too, trust me, um, it's not too good, they are managing the situation. Under this um, leadership, under the NPP leadership, it hasn't been so good. Uh, some will say we are the management stage, but this time I think the opportunity has come that the people of Kaswa have seen the lights. They know what water is and they know what alcohol is. They've, they've been able to weigh both and they are telling the good people of Ghana, the good people of Ewutu Senya East constituency and its environment that they need the change, a change that would bring a positive impact into the lives of everybody living in the constituency. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I do know that you became quite uh, famous or infamous, it depends on how you want to do the description, because of the disturbances that were recorded at that registration center when we had the phases of the registration ongoing for the, the newly compiled one. But 
somebody will say that you stood up uh, to a certain situation and the, the, the minister, who is also the member of parliament, uh, and, and it is because people think, based on my interaction, you're a very strong woman, but it's not only because of your strength, is it? What do you think that you bring to the table for which you would want to become the appealing point for the voters? You know, um, leadership is quite dicey. Um, everybody and how um, they play their leadership roles. Um, I'm someone who listens a lot. I'm down to earth. Um, I go anywhere. I do what I think it suits the people at that particular time. So the people have me at heart. I am part of them. I am not just one of them, but I am part of them. I have been, uh, I've been part of the family of um, Ewutu Senior East constituency. And uh, I, I wouldn't say I am God that I can solve all the problems, but at least um, I can meet them halfway through the journey, then we can solve the problem together. Uh, although um, there were some situations during the registration exercise, well, uh, it happened for a reason. There have been gunshots, and that wasn't the first incident reported. We've, we've had incidents uh, which we reported to the police uh, from the first day of the re registration to the, uh, until the incident occurred. I think after the incident, things uh, came to normal a bit. Um, Everything that happens is for a good reason, that's what I'll say. Mm. I'm not just a, a strong person, but it is what Nako is bringing on board. That's why I always say that a, it's at two women contesting the seats. It is not how tall one is, how short one is, how one thinks she's more prettier than the other, but let's discuss as mature women not gun shooting. Let's discuss at intelligent women, not bullying the other party. And let's discuss our policies, what one is bringing on board, what you have been able to do for the constituency, what you have been able to achieve. I am not an MP. I've never been an MP for the Wutu Senior East constituency. I am now coming in to serve the people. You have been an MP. So let me know what you have done over the eight years. Then let me bring on what John Dramani Mahama, the next president of the Republic of Ghana, has also done for the eight years, for the period of eight years, let us share these ideas. Let us put it on the table. Let the people of Ewutu Senya East constituency decide on what is good for them. I think as women, that is what we should be looking at and not the Rambo style of uh, politicking in Kaswa now. But if we have to talk about the things that need to be done, I asked a, a couple of uh, people before we started this interaction and you were called the Iron Lady. Uh, is that a name that was being given to you? Because uh, I do know that Hawa too is called Iron Lady and you're also called Iron Lady. So we have Iron Lady Square uh, trying to rub it off, uh, contest for the seat. That's a, that's a tough one. H how do you take some of these accolades uh, into, into your strike? Uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because this is the first time I'm hearing Iron Lady. I've, I've never heard it uh, that I'm called Iron Lady. And I don't know if Hawaii is also called Iron Lady, though. But then for the accolades, they would come. It is because I'm thinking you're two Iron Ladies. So uh, who will be the, the winner at the end of the day? No, but you know, officially, uh, officially it's been declared she's Rambo and I'm Chuck Norris. Okay, so you are, you are Rambo and she is no, Chuck Norris. I can't be Rambo. She's Rambo. I'm Chuck Norris. Okay, so you are Rambo. Chuck Norris. Norris. Person, yes. And then, um, and she is. She's Rambo. She's Rambo. Yes. And you are. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. Yes. Well, all of you are winners at the end of the day. Blow man and killer. So they are. Oh, in your in the movies, they are they are the the winners at the end of the day. They no, defeat the enemy. No, you you know with 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 Rambo. Rambo is always out to do the bad. He's always out to do the crooked. But with Chuck Norris, Chuck Norris sits <laughs> down, takes tactical strategies to maneuver its way, to get the, 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 the heart desires of the people, and that's the right. But with Rambo, it just displays its ignorance anywhere it goes. Buga buga. Buga buga, that's the right word. <laughs> but look, we do know that um, if you take a look at the constituency, you find um, those who are traders, retailers, etc. And then there are, there are areas that you find very plush houses, etc. So it's a mixed bag. We've already talked about what the demographics are. But if you want to serve them, for your campaigning, for you if you were to be elected, what will be the five key pointers for you uh, to be the main focus communicative areas? Okay, um, 
7 December is uh, me per my calendar is just uh, two and a half months away. Per my calendar, not per the national calendar. Per my calendar is just two and a half months away. And that's how you've pegged your campaign timelines. Exactly. Great. So uh, we are, we are doing our best to um, see how we can run the campaign up. That's what we are doing at the moment. But uh, what I think uh, the five key areas or the pointers that I normally when I go out, the message I give across is when I'm looking at um, jobs um, in the constituency, there are no jobs. When I say jobs, I'm looking at both um, the youth and our women. I'm a woman, so um, I tend to focus more on women. And you know, when we say Kaswa, 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 the name Kaswa um, generated out of uh, the name market. And you know, with our market, the the number of people that patronize the markets more are the women. So I'll focus uh, more on the women and the youth. There are lots of youth also in Kaswa, and I fall be uh, between the women and the youth. So um, it's it's quite disturbing that uh, we have a lot of youth in the constituency who have, uh, so to say, nothing to do. Uh, most of the youth in the constituency are also the breadwinners of their homes, and uh, most of them have lost their jobs as a result of this men's gold and and all these um, micro um, finance and all those things the closure of these banks and all that so a lot of them are home sometimes you can imagine uh, someone who earns about three thousand a month and at the, at the end of the day is now take, uh, driving a taxi who is earning just about 250 ghana a month or someone who is earning five thousand a month and is forced to join napco because he lost his job or her job at the bank and it's earning 700 so th these are some of the things that uh, are the concerns of the youth one now someone is also working in accra there is no job in kaswa there's no viable job i wouldn't say jobs like viable jobs in kaswa for the people of kaswa to do so at the end of the day at the end of the month you realize that all your salaries are going into fuel or transportation. Those who don't have cars, they pay for their transport first and all that. How much money do you have to feed your family? So we are looking at viable jobs. When I when I say viable jobs, um, and not just white colored jobs, there are, there are other jobs that the youth can engage themselves into that is more lucrative, that they can also use to feed their families. So then when we look at the women, the women in the constituency are my priority. Uh, we have a lot of women in Kaswa within the Eutu Senga East constituency. Uh, most of them are market women. Now, these market women have sheds, they have shops at the market, they have stalls. And at the end of the day, you, you, you pay so much money for these shops. You go to the place and then you hear it's been given to someone else because probably the person has paid more than you have paid. That is quite worrying. Somewhere last year, most of our women, our mothers, were beaten at the markets. The markets that was built under John Dramani Mahama because he saw the need for these markets to be well structured and expanded. So he managed to put up these two markets as the old and the new markets. Now, these women were beaten because, well, they tried to occupy the stalls that they had paid for and had been given to someone else. So these are some of the woes of uh, the women that we have in Kaso. So when uh, we have open jobs in the constituency, I'm sure that um, the youth and our mothers will all get something to feed their families. Now, we also talk about sanitation and health. Um, initially, when, when, when you move around or when you hear of Kaswa in the news, it is about one developmental issue or the other, one inauguration of this or the other. But um, since this government came in power, all what we hear in the news is one gunshot or one, one, one baller, one corner. That is what the, the people say. That is what they tell me. Uh, that is not my word. That's what they tell me. One corner, one baller. The sanitation in Kaswa now is so appalling. Even I'm sure when you were driving through Kaswa, you would have seen some of the garbages, heaped of garbages on the pavement and all that. So we need, we need a better management system 
to help us with our sanitation problem in the constituency. I know sanitation has to do with a uh, human behavior. But you do have a municipality. Yes, that's what I'm saying. We need a better management system because the municipality is under the NPP government. The MC, they are being elected by their government. So when we get a better management system from their end, if they are able to pick up a better management, all these things, because under uh, the NDC, that was uh, Honorable Adams, no, there were no sanitation issues in the constituency, although he was also the MC. So he made sure that all these things were uh, well attended to. Now, we are looking at our health system in the constituency. And this is why I always bring out the point that uh, a little girl walked to me some time ago crying. So I, I, I tend to ask her what the reason were. And she said, um, the mother just passed and I was quiet. So as I narrate the story, this woman lives at Akweli. She was in labor. She had to come to the Kaswa Polyclinic just under the overhead. When she got there, there were no infrastructures or uh, talk of facilities. You mean health facilities? Health facilities at that polyclinic. That place is very small. So she was referred to Winneba. Now, we are looking at the distance from Kaswa to Winneba. Oh, you mean that when the person got to the polyclinic, the or, the, polyclinic. Or, or that health facility, that they didn't health. have enough equipment or the, 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 the yes. things to be able to take care of? Of her at that okay. point. So she was referred to Winneba. Mm. Now, we are looking at the traffic from Kaswa to Winneba, taking into consideration the traffic at Bujumburam. Mm. As soon as she got to the entrance of the Winneba hospital, the woman had passed. So the point is, what happened if we had something in Kaswa that the woman would have just been referred to within 10 or 5 minutes, she could have been treated? What happened to the uh, CP polyclinic clinic? That's where we are now. What happened? If it wasn't for the noise that we had made last year, the push and the, and the distress calls that we made, this thing wouldn't even have been operationalized. Now, it is not even fully operationalized. It is just, it is just being managed for now. Mm, because I've been inside, I see that it's only being partially operated. Exactly. Very empty uh, halls and, and, and places that could have been used for OPDs, etc. Exactly. And this thing was completed way back. Even before, is it part of the extended uh, project itself? Or this is it is, and even the road that we are standing on is part of that project. So you see, if we had this hospital operationalized then, or fully operationalized, I'm sure that woman's life could have been saved. That man who lost the husband, who lost the wife, wouldn't have been bereaved. That child couldn't or wouldn't also lose the mother. So these are some of the things that we also have to look at as a constituency. And these are some of the things that you want to say on the campaign trail. Exactly. Well, we know that you're, you take us the, to another point in the constituency, and then um, we'll also get to ask some critical questions questions because one of the focus areas is also to take to save and rescue the good people of Ewutu Senya East constituency from this clueless government. Um, about the interchange, uh, we are standing right on the Kaswa interchange, what we call the Kaswa Dubai. This was constructed under the able leadership of the next president of the Republic of Ghana, John Dramani Mahama. Initially, when you are coming from Accra to Kaswa, as soon as you get to the toll booths, from the toll booths to get to this junction, the overhead, you spend nothing less than four hours. Nothing less than four hours before you can get to Kaswa because the road was narrow. But now we have this interchange where after you cross the toll booth, you use just five minutes to get to Kaswa. Then we, the women, pregnant women, nursing mothers and all that, when we are coming, because of the traffic situation, sitting in the car for long hours, we will arrive at the destination where we've been having swollen feet and all that. And at the end of the day, you go to the hospital, especially with pregnant women, and you'll be told you have complications. But now there's a situation whereby you just do this journey within five minutes, you go home and you're able to prepare dinner for your husbands. So this as well, these are one of the benefits that we've gotten from this uh, road interchange. 
and not just this. The president, that's the next president of the Republic of Ghana, John Dramani Mahama, taught it twice that we living in Kaswa, Winiba, and those areas wouldn't have to go through um, Achimota, Awoshi, all the way to join the Insawam Road to go to, uh, that's what I, Kumase. So they constructed the 24-kilometer road from Kaswa Obom Junction all the way to Amasaman. And that is also a plus. When I'm talking of roads, I'm, 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 I'm talking of the pink FM94 roads. I'm talking of the new town road, the road that, that, that links um, Ion City to Kaswa. Initially, when you are coming from Ion City, Ion City is just here. You have to get to Kaswa and take another car back through Kaswa to Ion City. Yeah. But let's see. Uh, we haven't seen your face throughout. I'm wearing a mask, so at least you can have uh, the benefit of getting the cameras and your constituents also see you. So that's how you look like. Yeah, sure. Very beautiful. Thank you. Apart so from being intelligent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so that is uh, Nakwayo Kuno, and she is the parliamentary candidate elect for the NDC. She is contesting the member of parliament of the area, Hawa Kumsun, who also is a minister of state. And again, I have to reiterate, it is that very incident that got her onto the limelight, that incident at that registration center when we had the registration ongoing, that brought the name out, Big Na Koyo, Iron Lady, indefatigable, she says. She is the Chuck Norris of the Ewutu Senya East constituency. But it's why we have to leave you. We have to go back to the studio.